This is Tom Kokel with the Prairie Advocate News, here with Mike Smitty, the Democrat candidate for state representative in the 71st District, uh, running against the current representative, Rich Morthland. Thanks for, uh, for the time, Mike. Well, thank you for allowing me to do this. Uh, Mike, you're currently a supervisor for the Illinois Department of Corrections. Um, what uh, the sale of the Thompson Prison to the Bureau of Prisons? Um, you probably have some very interesting uh, statements to make about that. Uh, I'm more curious as to know how Illinois can deal with the overcrowded conditions in many of the facilities yet in Illinois if Governor Quinn still wants to close more facilities. Yeah. Well, first of all, I was very happy that the sale of Thompson Prison was completed. We, what we have seen over the last couple decades in uh, Carroll County especially, with the closing of the Army Depot, it has really devastated your economy. And for the past 11 years with the Thompson Prison, every politician has said, well, we're going to get this open, we're going to do this around every election. And now it seems as though it's actually going to happen. We're going to have 11 to 1,200 jobs once this prison gets opened. And I uh, would love to give a big thank you to President Obama and uh, for Senator Durbin for making this happen. Uh, it's going to revitalize your area. And as I said before, it's been hit very, very hard over the past several decades. It seems like you, uh, it, it, you, you folks in Carroll County have been forgotten about quite a bit. And as the rep, I want to make sure that we uh, get up there and we do everything we can to also help out. The one thing that I was very disappointed in is when uh, Representative Morthland and Representative Sasha said that they would like to just give the Thompson Prison to the federal government for what was owed on the bonds, which was around $63 million. What that, what that would have done is, uh, as we can see, it was sold for $165 million, was take away a, over $100 million in revenue that the state can now use. And from my understanding with talking to Senator Durbin's office, that uh, they're going to reimburse the, the village of Thompson almost $3 million for the water tower that they specifically built for the prison. So right there, we're already seeing the economic effects of this uh, this sale in the local community. So I'm very, very happy to see that. As far as the prison overcrowding and what Governor Quinn is trying to do on the state level, um, he, he, he lost in court last week with the injunction still staying in place for the correctional facilities that he wants to close. I think that is uh, the, uh, simply the wrong move. Even though uh, Governor Quinn is a Democrat and I agree with, with him on, you know, a lot of the democratic ideals. This is where I would have to, to say if I was in the legislature, I would uh, vehemently disagree with him. Because I'm uh, in the Department of Corrections, I, we see on a daily basis here at the East Moline Correctional Center um, the influx of inmates. We were supposed to have 688 inmates for this facility. That's what it was built for. Currently we have 1,400. Um, we're supposed to have around 200, a little over 200 for correctional officers, frontline staff. Right now we're at 140. Overtime is going through the roof. We have 12, 16 hour days for these individuals. We have guards actually working uh, in an uh, environment where they're having to guard 184 inmates at one time by themselves. So it puts them in a very large disadvantage and a very unsafe working environment. Uh, what we need to do is make sure that these facilities stay, stay open uh, to reduce the overcrowding and the prisoners that were, in, a, in, in fact, taken out of these facilities and shipped to other places are taken back there and uh, help reduce that overcrowding. Now, having said that, we are still overcrowded at the East Lane Correctional Center even without that. I mean, we were running around 12 to 1,300 inmates even without the thought of closing. What we need to do is we need to take a look at all of the prisons throughout the state of Illinois and make sure that they're being ran efficiently and if there's places that we can put prisoners um, that haven't been utilized to help take the effects of the overcrowding, say, like at East Moline, that would be the best way to go. Yeah, we had uh, quoted Governor Bogoyevich uh, several years ago. Um, he. He said the prison would never open unless one was closed, and I, it just seems like that seems to be the same philosophy uh, going into uh, you know, the 2013. But uh, 
I believe that uh, you know we have several prisons in the area that are in similar situation. Dixon is is terribly overcrowded, uh, but uh, do you do you foresee any possibility that that uh, if some of the prisons are closed, uh, would would the state be able to utilize some of the cells at, at Thompson if the feds didn't fill them up? I, that would be something that they would have to work out uh, in conjunction with the federal government and the state. Um, I'm not really sure exactly how that would work, but from all indications right now, closing a facility is not something that the court system wants to do, uh, even though it's being uh, proposed by uh, Governor Quinn. And I don't believe we're going to have to worry about that. We will cross that bridge uh, if it does at some point come. And I would be uh, an advocate to make sure that whatever we could do to um, help out the overcrowding and to help our frontline staff out um, to diminish what they, uh, the security risks, not only for the officers, but also, also for the non-security staff that have to be uh, around these inmates. I would do everything that in my power to help them. Well, when you speak about funding prisons, you have to talk about appropriations in Illinois, which is a pretty divisive topic these days. Um, you know, the Senate has had a Democrat majority since 2002, the House uh, for 28 of the last 30 years, and a Democrat governor for the last 12 years. Um, the state of Illinois used to be one of the most productive states in the Union. Uh, today it ranks dead last or near the bottom of just about every economic ranking. It's uh, pretty tough to do business in Illinois these days. Um, both rating agencies, Moody's and Standard & Poor, have issued a negative outlook for the state, which basically means they don't expect much improvement. Uh, me being a, a citizen of Illinois and a local businessman, I hope they're, they're, they're wrong. Um, but when you see uh, an Illinois Chamber of Commerce report card that says Illinois ranks 39th in the cost of doing business, 36th in economic growth, 16th in education and workforce preparedness, which are so connected, um, and 49th in regulatory environment, which I'll get into a question about regulatory issues. An example is the state uh, has funded the expansion of Western Illinois University here in the Quad Cities, but they've, they've cut back on what they funded the community colleges. It's supposed to be a, a one-third split between the state and, and admissions and, and taxes, local taxes, but yet uh, this year funding was cut to 12%, 17% last year, and the community colleges are the, are the real uh, local connection between workforce development and preparing our our citizens for the new for the new generation of workforce. What kind of uh, economic leadership uh, do you expect from from the governor uh, if if you were to be uh, elected to the to the house? What what can we expect in terms of of leadership and getting Illinois back on track? Well, it was, that's a very long and in-depth question, but I'll try to answer it as best as I can. A lot, First, of, a lot of different issues there, but I think yeah. there, you know, it, we have to look at the big picture. Absolutely. Here's one of the first things that I would make sure that we would do. Um, we have a small business tax increase that set the sunset in 2014-2015. Illinois needs to keep their promises to these small businesses and make sure that that does actually sunset. That's, that's the first thing that I think will help out businesses. The other thing is, is I don't believe that our economics uh, are as dire as what people are saying. Uh, last year we took $29.6 billion in exported goods uh, in Illinois. That was the highest of any other state surrounding us. So we are very uh, good as far as sending out our Still products. pretty productive. Yes. The other thing is we need to make sure that these corporate tax loopholes and corporate welfare for these large companies, such as Sears, that uh, we gave $80 million to last year. And then they decided they wanted to close several stores nationally and then lay off several of their employees um, in the state of Illinois. We need to make sure that they're held accountable when things like that happen. And we're not just giving them a free lunch, so to speak. We need to have better regulations and we need to know 
when we give out tax breaks to these companies here in Illinois, they're doing the right thing with them, which is creating jobs and making sure the economy of our local communities are, are actually receiving the benefits of that. And if they're not, I think we should take those uh, breaks back and do something to that nature. So I believe that uh, our economy can actually start growing. One of the major things here with uh, Western Illinois University, it, it was a $16 million project. We were the largest community here in the in the nation without a uh, without an Illinois univer without an university a state university. So I believe that with the growth of at Western Illinois University, with uh, folks coming not only from all over Illinois, uh, spending their money, sending their kids here, but also giving the uh, Illinois uh, tuition break to those that are right across the river in Iowa, will help generate a lot of money to this local economy here. The other things that we need to take a look at that's going to generate a lot of jobs and a lot of money is the high-speed rail. That's something that me and my opponent uh, vehemently disagree on. He says that it's not going to create uh, very many jobs here in Illinois and it's going to cost way, way more than what it's worth. Well, the total cost of the project is $265 million. Illinois' uh, part of that is $88 million. But what the larger picture is, it's going to create $480 million in household incomes for the state of Illinois. And that averages out to 22,000 jobs for the state of Illinois. That's a huge boost to our economy. The other thing is, is here locally in our district, it's going to create between 500 and 800 jobs. That's just in this local community here. And that's going to mean between 11 and 16 million dollars in local income. And that is I, I'm not sure what my opponent uh, believes is good economic growth, but to me, and getting 800 more people uh, jobs and good paying jobs at that is uh, boosting our economy here in this local district. So I believe that those things are very, very good. Now for the upper part of our district, I think Route 30 is uh, for an infrastructure project that was put in, uh, into place in the Capitol Bill uh, about three years ago and they're doing studies on it that would co put Clinton, uh, Clinton, Iowa all the way over to Interstate 88 going through the lower part of Whiteside County is, is a major project that we need to take a look at because if we have good infrastructure and good roads that means that local businesses will be able to come in and uh, do business with us because we're at the crossroads of America here. We look at the larger cities that are within a 300 mile radius of us. We have Chicago, we have Des Moines, we have Indianapolis, Minneapolis, St. Paul, St. Louis. These are all hubs. And if we can have a business uh, structure that will allow us to take product and send it out to those areas, I think that we can rejuvenate this, uh, these communities here in the 71st district uh, exponentially. I think it's a great idea for us. So when we see the, the bleakest, we also have to see a lot of opportunity. We've been in a recession for a long time. We're coming out of that. We've seen the unemployment rates go down nationally. This district has some of the lowest unemployment rates in the state. And we need to make sure that we just keep doing what we're doing. And when we have a legislator that is out of touch and is unable to uh, look in, into the future and look at our economic development situation and not look at it as just a partisan thing. We need to make sure that we have somebody that can work with both sides. And because it's a democratic idea, it's a bad idea. And I look to go down to Springfield and not just work with the democratic leadership, but also work with the Republican leadership because we have to have uh, compromise across the table. We can't be going, doing what we've been doing for the past four decades and not funding the things that need to be funded. Sort of, it was sort of ed like education is what, you're, is what you're talking about. And that's, you know, our kids are the most important thing that we have. And the American dream is, is dying uh, with this generation. Every generation is supposed to do better than the next. What we're doing is we're putting our kids behind the eight ball. I have a six and an eight year old. And thinking of what they're gonna have to go through over the next 10 or 15 years growing up, it, it just boggles my mind. I wouldn't want to be them. We need to make sure that we have people in Springfield that have the core ideals of not just the Democrat and the Republicans, but everyone. And I'm going down there to fight for my kids, for my wife who is an educator, because she has to teach these kids. We need to put a, a hard pr core press on to make sure education comes back in this state. 
because we are falling behind. And that is uh, going to be our downfall. If we can do things like bring in uh, Western Illinois University, that and have these folks with these higher um, uh, job skills like uh, electrical engineering at, at a four-year university and you know co-op with Black Hawk College like they have for years in the community college setting and give them a path for success instead of a path for failure that is what we need to do and I am right on track and I know where we need to go with that and I will do everything in my power to make sure that happens. That sounds like a good plan and hopefully the being able to uh, improve the education and the, our workforce uh, will, will coincide with uh, the more job opportunities and uh, continue to grow in that respect. Um, regarding the development of jobs, as I mentioned uh, with the Illinois Chamber report card that Illinois ranks 49th in regulatory environment. Um, I personally have been involved in some as an alderman in the city of Lanark, uh, we were just um, fined by the EPA uh, for a demolition of a building that had already halfway collapsed. And we were fined uh, $150 for improper filing of a 10, day, 10 working day notice. The fee was doubled because we had already demolished it for safety reasons. Um, we had a situation up in Apple River, it's out of your district, it's up in Joe Davis County, mm -hmm. where the Illinois Department of Agriculture did not follow their own protocol and entered the property of a beekeeper who, um, with no warrant, no notice, on several occasions, and then confiscated his bees because they had, he had a, allegedly had a disease and then after all that happened, they granted him a hearing. It seems like some things are a little out of place with some of the state agencies that, are, that the Illinois House and the Senate give the power to, and they also fund these, these, these operations, these agencies. And, you know, in your opinion, do you have any ideas to rein in some of these uh, agencies that are in, in essence, harassing local business, agriculture. Uh, you know, you, you're involved in farming, you know, with your family farm. You probably see things like that, too. Do you have any ideas as to how we can improve the regulatory uh, environment here in Illinois? Yes, I do. And it goes back to um, the local involvement of your state legislator. I want to be a full-time representative here in this district, which means when these types of problems happen to our local communities throughout the district, I want them to have a straight line to my office. I'm going to make sure that I have staff that are worried about doing the work of the constituents here. I come from Lane Evans. I worked for Lane for almost nine years. Constituent service was his number one priority. It didn't have to do with uh, your race, it didn't have to do with the party lines that, that, that were drawn during elections. It had to do about the people and helping them out. And, and that's what I would want to do. I want to make sure that if you have problems like that in Lanark, you can call my office. I will work with you to make sure that some of these regulations are looked at and do an in-depth search to see how I can help you. That's what a legislator is supposed to do. They say that it's a part-time job. I don't believe that. If you're a state legislator and you're working for the people that elected you, you need to be a full-time legislator. If you have four different jobs, as my opponent does, working for three different community colleges as a professor, having a family farm that he is running, and then trying to work as a legislator, which one is the most important thing to him? And you're also drawing more than one pension out of that. If I get elected, even though I'm a state employee, I'm only going to receive one pension because I only, uh, being a state employee, they combine into one pension. That's the first thing that we need to make sure of. We have a legislator that's going to care about this district enough to be a full-time legislator and look at the problems that uh, the, the communities are having and work with them. That's what I want to do. As far as what the Chamber of Commerce is, I know that the local chamber here is wanting to set up an advisory board for economic development on how we can bring in new, uh, new businesses and new uh, leadership. When I, when I met with them last month, I said, if I'm elected, I want to have a staff person or myself on that board. 
So we're not having to have them come to us after they've tried to do all of this stuff and then uh, catch us up. I want to be there on that board or a member of my staff on that board to make sure we're there at the ground, uh, working at from the ground up. And I think that would go a long way in helping us with improving our rating with, uh, with the state uh, of Illinois Chamber. And I believe probably the 50th state is Wisconsin because we were always at a race for the bottom, uh, it seems like, on uh, improving uh, jobs in, the, in our two states. And I said, this has not just been a 10 or 12 year process, this has been over several decades, it's cross party lines, and we need to make sure that it stops. And being a full-time representative to make sure these regulations are taken care of is, is a good way for us locally to handle this and uh, my, my door is always going to be open as Lane was to make sure that we can uh, address these issues with you. Well that's uh, in closing uh, what would you like to tell our readers, your constituents? Well I'm hoping that after November 6th they will be our constituents. Uh, the one thing that I would just ask is I want to earn your vote. I want to make sure that everyone in this district is heard. That means from Carroll County, Henry County, Whiteside, and the, and the parts that we have in Rock Island County. Even though I'm from Rock Island County, I'm not a Rock Island County candidate. I'm a candidate for the whole 71st district. And I believe I've shown that in where, where I come from and how I get things done. I uh, make it a point to make sure that I hit every part of this district. Uh, my, when I first announced back in September, the first place I went was Savannah and to Carroll County because I knew that the people of Carroll County have been forgotten about it for the last several years. Uh, if I'm elected, that's not going to happen with me. I want to hold regular office hours up there. I want to make sure that the constituents up there are heard and they have a voice and they know who their state representative is. So I want to make sure that people in this district know that I'm going to be working for them once elected and I would be honored on November 6th to receive their vote. Very good. Mike, thank you for thank your you time. Thank you very much.